Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver now. Morning, Bix, where road to road .com. What's your morning, Horn of Z's, your sip of chaga coffee with C60. I took my C60 earlier, the gummies. I'm loving the C60 gummies. C60 Purple Power gummies. Go to RoadToRuda.com. Affiliates. We don't have many affiliates. Miles Franklin, of course, which I highly recommend everybody get your physical silver in your in your own pocket. Uh, C60 Purple Power. If you use Road to Ruta discount, you get uh, discounted C60 gummies. I know a lot of people don't like the oil factor in the C60. The gummies, psh, it's like eating candy. Um, anyway, had an awesome discussion with Litecoin Lisi yesterday. We talked about silver. We talked about uh, gold. We talked about FTX. We talked about conspiracy stuff. Go to Litecoin Lisa's channel and click on the live area. You'll find the, uh, the discussion. It was great. I don't know why... Lisa only has 5,000 subscribers. She has an awesome channel. Everybody go over to Litecoin Lisa and subscribe. Um, she says it keeps going up and keeps going down. That's They're manipulating it. Obviously, we know that happens now after all the Twitter files. Um, I've known it for a long time. For a long time, they wouldn't let me hit 100,000 subscribers. Um, I don't know why, but apparently at 100,000, something happened. Now I have more, but it took forever. It took over a year. Um, to jump over that. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, they're controlling us. It's rigged. The game is rigged, I tell you. Let's talk about rigging. Um, silver, they slammed it down yesterday. Today, they let it go up a little bit. Again, nothing matters in the world of silver prices. They're playing with the 50-day, uh, 100-day, and 200-day moving average. We're currently sitting well above the 200-day uh, moving average, but it's close enough for striking distance. As you can see back here, back in April, they did the same thing. They brought it up. They, they toyed around with it in the 25, 26 area, and then all of a sudden, bang, 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 slam it down, slam it down, slam it down. Cover your shorts, naked shorts. It's the same old... You'd think they'd get a better way to rig the silver market by now, but after 170 years, they don't have a better way. Uh, this way started in the early 1970s with Alan Greenspan writing the first computer programs for banking. Um, and then the introduction of the, the derivative market for silver, a massive derivative market, um, got started right when the CME, um, well, it wasn't the CME back then, um, but right when the CFTC was invented to run cover for it in the early 70s. And then Alan Greenspan introduced all his computer programs to destroy uh, fair market value of anything. Um, there's nothing that is not rigged right now. Nothing. Milk, copper, oil, uh, stocks, bonds. They're even putting derivatives on derivatives. Uh, you ever heard of a, a swaption? Silver swaption? It's a swap option. I mean, it just gets so ridiculous at some point. And you can see the volumes are just off the charts on the COMEX. Um, just to remind everybody on these deliveries. Now, there's, there's crazy things going on deliveries, as I expected in December. Um, about two days before the delivery started, they had a 2000 contract EFR, which is exchange for risk, basically saying, I don't have the silver. I don't know what to do. And they basically, another bank took a position somewhere else. So someone was in trouble with, uh, say copper and they said, okay, I'll, I'll swap you these copper contracts for this silver contract. It is complete fraud. Uh, Terry Duffy runs the uh, circus over there at the comics, uh, a complete jokester, fraud, fraud guy, knee deep in corruption, um, because the CME is first line of defense. They're self-regulating. You know, JP Morgan gets nailed for $920 million fine, largest fine in commodity history. Terry Duffy, that was his responsibility. What happened? You know, don't come on the news and tell me, oh, how you could have done a better job at FTX, if you let the crimes go on on your exchange. Um, so he missed it. The CFTC missed it, which is the regulator, even though they were sitting on the desk of J.P. Morgan. And that's the funny thing. It wasn't missed. Bart Chilton said, yes, we knew about it. 100%. They knew about it. And it was a political decision not to shut it down. What does that tell you about your regulator? Anyway, uh, here's what's going on with deliveries this month. You might notice the the uh, 
eligible category and um, registered category, it's all smoke and mirrors. They had to add a bunch of silver to the registered um, because they, you know, they have their baseline of fraud, which is like 30 million ounces, which is fake that they report on. And then they, if, if uh, people come in for, to take silver out, they got to add. So they added a bunch. It's over 35 million now. Um, but really interesting time because look, there's still 2000 contracts of open interest. That's about 40% of of the entire silver delivery month hasn't been delivered and we're already six days in. Remember, if they had the silver, they pay storage fees every day on there and it's expensive. You don't want to be holding silver in your warehouse. So if you have the silver and you have to deliver it, you should deliver it the first day or two. Ma- maximum one or two or three days. Here we are six days in and they still haven't delivered 10 million, uh, 11 million ounces. What's going on? Why can't they deliver this tiny amount of silver? We'll find out, I guess. Um, and we were so used to the fraud and silver. It's kind of numb, numbing. It's a numbing agent. Um, so far, almost 3,000 contracts have been delivered. That's uh, what close to 15 million ounces um, with still sitting on the sidelines is uh, 11 million ounces. Nobody knows why. Don't ask, don't tell a policy at the comics. Um, so right now we're looking at somewhere 25 to 30 million ounces delivered. Uh, what does it mean? Who the hell knows? The, the real action isn't happening on the comics anymore. The real action is happening in the OTC market and the leasing market for silver. Which by the end of the year, uh, Bank of America should be done, should be out of their silver rigging position. Same with JP Morgan. That lease is a one-year lease. 1.2 billion ounces had to be delivered within the year unless they were rolled over. Or you have exchange for risk. It's just crazy. I talked to Andy Sheckman a while about this, about how, you know, you can go underwater all you want in silver. It's like J.P. Morgan and Bank of America and Citibank and say, hey, Citibank, why don't you lose 10 billion over here in copper and we'll make it up for you in silver. And then J.P. Morgan, you lose 10 billion over here in silver and we'll make it up to you in gold. And then we'll add in some treasury derivatives and so that we're all even and we're all making money. We're all positive. We can rig the market all we want. We'll just offset each other's losses. And it's shown in the data, in the OCC data, Office of Comptroller of Currency, that's run by, actually, there's a, there's a deputy guy who heads it, but there's a number two guy, is the J.P. Morgan guy. You always got to check where the J.P. Morgan person is in each of the regulator areas. All right. Uh, interesting article here, Wall Street on Parade, Jerome Powell and Jamie Dimon met privately on September 30th. Weird stuff followed. Um, September 30th of last year, remember, September 30th is the last day of the fiscal year of the United States of America. What happened? Uh, Jamie Dimon, I guess they, they had a, a meeting about all the, the secret money that they're getting. They're, yeah, the, JP Morgan's getting billed out every day. Same with all these banks are getting bailed out every day. And it's even in the data. Now there's stuff that's being revealed now that uh, there's about $88 trillion worth of uh, treasury bonds that are being exposed as being not there by the BIS, the Bureau of International Settlements. Like, where are these? I mean, that could be a little problem when you're running an unbagged monetary system that there's $88 trillion of unaccounted for uh, money in the system. It's like, ah, shit, what do we do? And that's coming from the BIS, the Bureau of International Settlements. This is the end game, my friends. Just hang on tight. Um, let's see. Uh, reverse repo operations, they need $2 trillion per day right now. $2 trillion per day for the reverse repos, which is, without that, the, the system would have gone away. The entire derivative complex would have been imploded. Um, and then you have the even the bigger things you got, uh, where is it? Oh, here's here's 3.2 trillion in tri-party repos. That's a nice addition to the game. 3.2 trillion in tri-party repos. Uh, let's let's take a look at it, and uh, we can see exactly. Here's where the volume started. 2017, 18, 19. Right here, 2000. This is the beginning of the silver debacle, and the, as the system was falling apart, the beginning of 2021. And all of a sudden, bang, just skyrockets. Those are bailouts. Those are all bailouts. Those are foreign bailouts. You name it. They can do it any which way they want. 
they don't even have to report it. But this, so this is just the store, stuff they reported. Domestic holdings of the Fed. So they've bought. They let this crap go out there and they buy it back. They got eight trillion of uh, Soma holdings, uh, mainly consisting of U.S. Treasury notes. That's the incentive. We're almost at five trillion dollars in in Treasury notes. So the U.S. government issues the bonds and the Fed buys them. I mean. And the Fed creates money out of thin air. So basically, the U.S. government is printing money out of thin air. Agency mortgage-backed securities. And then it all goes into these criminal um, real estate bonds and all that. Gets sent off as mortgage-backed securities. All of a sudden, nobody wants mortgage-backed securities because they're so toxic. A lot of them are fake. And then, so the Fed goes in and buys those, too. Anyway, the con is at $8 trillion now. What does it matter? What did Ruta write in the sand? In the Fed comic books, it, to infinity. Print money to infinity. That's what they're doing. All right. So I want to get into a little bit of crypto magic. Everybody's like, oh, we're, we're nearing the bottom in Bitcoin and cryptos. I, I'm like, no. No, the, we're not at the bottom until the, all the exchanges shut down because they're criminal exchanges. The Gemini right now has got a huge problem. Coinbase has a huge, huge problem. Kraken has a huge problem. Bitfinex, Binance, they all have huge problems because they're all playing the game of DeFi and yield farming. Yield farming, I'll, I'll explain yield farming in, in uh, one basic term. It's called Ponzi. Yield farming is Ponzi. When someone says, give us, lend us your Bitcoin and we'll give you 17% interest on it for every day that you hold it. You give it to them and then you'll never get it back. You're never going to get it back because it's a Ponzi scheme. Sam Bankman Freed was real good at that, wouldn't he? We create fictitious coins. And then the big one to me is the banking system within cryptos. That has gone absolutely sideways. There's only two banks now running the crypto con. And that's Silvergate Bank, which is in deep shit. And Deltek Bank, which is the Bahama Bank that you know the crypto cabal uses. And that's the Tether Bank. And they're all bullshit banks. They're lies. Silvergate CEO pins letter defending ample liquidity as Elizabeth Warren demands answers. <laughs> I want to see how much they gave to Elizabeth Warren. And did she, why did, why are any of these politicians giving back the money that Sam Bankman freed and his family gave them? NFTX and Alameda. And why isn't anybody going after uh, Glenn Ellison? Caroline Ellison's father or his mother. They're both criminals or how about sam bakeman freed's mother whose name's barbara freed who was one of the lead attorneys for hillary clinton or joe bankman who at well they're both stanford people joe bankman has a, has a weekly newscast anti-trump newscast i mean this stuff is so obvious to anybody who ha takes half a second to look at it i want to show you something you're gonna just laugh you're going to laugh because one of the, the biggest bank in cryptos is a bank called Deltic Bank. Deltic Bank out of the, uh, the Bahamas. And you think, Deltic Bank, wow. Boy, they finance guys like, well, let's take a look. Who, who are they financing? Brock Pierce. Uh, Reeve Collins. Craig Sellers. These guys are all part of the crypto cabal. All running this thing called De Delta Bank that nobody knows. It's this mysterious bank. But a while back, hey, we had the CEO of Delta Bank give an interview while he's sitting in his gaming chair rocking back and forth and a, a gaming headset. The CEO of one of the, the biggest bank in crypto. Here it is. Today's guest is Gregory Pepin, deputy CEO at Delta Bank and Trust. Look at him. Does it, he look like the CEO of an upstanding bank? Hell no. Welcome, Gregory. Hi. Last weekend, a medium post by a pseudonymous former Bitcoin investor going by the name Crypto Anonymous made the rounds on crypto Twitter and elsewhere. It was titled The Bit Short Inside Crypto's Doomsday Machine, and it alleged that the stablecoin Tether, which is supposed to be backed one-to-one -one by U.S. dollars, is a, quote, highly probable fraud. There were a lot of... Um, <laughs> I love how he's just... And he nods his head. 
This guy, and he's got his arms folded like this. Does that look like a CEO? That looks like me and my, right here, getting out of bed. And I'm going to go talk about, you know, multi-billion dollar fraud. Different strands that Crypto Anonymous wove together to present his or her hypothesis. But the one that most people zoomed in on concerned whether or not Tether is fully backed. So Tether is run by Tether Limited and Tether Limited's bank is Deltec, which is uh, where you work. And that's a bank based in the Bahamas. And the part of the piece that people were concerned with was a section where Crypto Anonymous showed some tables of the foreign liabilities of domestic banks. And here she wrote, quote, from January 2020 to September 2020, the amount of all foreign currencies held by all the domestic banks in the Bahamas increased only by $600 million, going from $4.7 billion to $5.3 billion. And so the Bahamian dollar is pegged to the U.S. dollar 101, so it's the same in U.S. dollars. And then he or she wrote, but during the same period, total issued tethers increased by almost 5.4 billion, going from 4.6 billion to 10 billion. So Greg, can you explain why this discrepancy exists? Well, now, first of all, remember where they're in the Bahamas. Deltic Bank is like a virtual bank. They're situated right next to FTX. They're obviously the same people running the same criminal institutions. And this guy's involved. I don't know how much power he has, but it's just hysterical. Listen to his excuse. Well, um, I've seen that article, actually, and I find it very interesting that uh, there's someone that apparently have time perfectly buying and selling crypto. It's actually often the case in those articles of so-called experts. They usually have time to market like geniuses and then start to claim things that are kind of unbacked. Especially in that case, uh, they went to that, I think it's the Digest or well, Central Bank of the Bahamas, and they became overnight a banker expert, which I love that because we always look to recruit. But in that case, they didn't dig a little bit further about how that report works. Um, first of all, they should have known that the Bahamas is what they call an offshore uh, jurisdiction. So what he means by offshore jurisdiction is you have domestic bank and international banks. In the domestic bank, there is two types of license linked to it. You have what they call the authorized dealer license and the authorized agent license. Deltec do own an authorized agent license, which is a license that allows them to custody Bahamian dollars. However, we don't have what we call an authorized dealer license. So when it comes to cash and deposit, we cannot hold any Bahamian dollars cash and deposit. Oh, they can't take any cash. And, uh, nice bank. You can't take any cash and deposit. But you can create, you can allow tether to create as much as they want of the tether token and and point to your bank and say oh yes you the, the deposits over here at deltec it's a fraud it's a fraud but we've known this for since its inception eight years ago deltec was invented with the tether the tether had to have a bank remember tether was only a four billion dollar fraud in the beginning and i remember how they proved that they had uh, actual cash in the bank. It was the very exact day that ended the uh, ICO for um, uh, EOS. That was the day that they, they got some criminal US, ex-US CIA guy to say, yes, this audit is real and they have one-for-one -one backing on this specific day. And that day was the very end day of the, what, one-year-long EOS ICO which raised how much? $4 billion. So was it, it's just so embarrassing that, and then, and then, I mean, literally, look how big Tether grew into the, what, $100 billion? And then a huge chunk of that, 40% of it, was being laundered through FTX. So they give FTX, they create, a, you know, 40 billion new uh, Tether tokens, give it to FTX, they put it on each exchange, to siphon money and cryptos out and then they run away this isn't i mean if you're if you're the sec gary Gensler, of course he knew what was going on the whole time and he never he never warned anybody that this was a fraud he never warned anybody that that uh yield farming was a fraud if you're if your true essence of your being really wants to be the protector of the little guy like elizabeth warren says don't let them get into the fraud. Don't wait till the shit blows up. If you see a fraud, say, hey, wait a minute. You know, where the hell is this money going, coming and going from? Are they just washing Tether through the system so that they can suck up cash and massive amounts of Bitcoin and lock it away for a, a, a better day? This is not rocket science. And Gary Gensler knows this. So we should all blame Gary Gensler for not their, their job is not to protect people. They keep saying, oh, we got to protect the, the little guy. If they want to protect the little guy, tell them not to go into this thing in the first place and do investigations. The guy was sitting in your fucking office. Sam Bakeman freed. And he's, he's the son of your boss, for God's sake. At MIT. Unbelievable. Anyway. 
if you go through the Tether conspiracy, there's there's a ton of stuff. Uh, go to Wiki Wiki Wand. There's a good rundown of what Tether is. Uh, invented by Brock Pearson, uh, was it Reeve Collins or the other guy? Uh, back in 2014, uh, back then nobody thought it was backed by anything, but nobody cared back then. It was way early days. Nobody thought it would be a big deal. It gets bigger and Pierce, bigger. Uh, Brock Pierce became the co-founder of Tether, and the other co-founder, Craig Sellers, was the CTO of Mastercoin, precursor to Tether, named RealCoin, was announced in 2014 by the co-founders, Brock P Pierce, Reeve Collins, Craig Sellers. This, these are the, the core of the crypto cabal. The first tokens were issued in 2000, October 2014 uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain uh, using OmniLayer protocol. Uh... 2015 to 16, uh, Bitfinex. That's the that. So the same thing that they did at FTX: create a token, worthless token, steal everybody's money, and run away, the, and front run all your clients and all that shit. The same thing was been has been done by Bitfinex for a hell of a long time. In 2015, the cryptocurrency exchange Bitfinex enabled trading of Tether on their platform, while representatives from Tether and Bitfinex say the two are separate. The Paradise Papers leaked in November 2017 named Bitfinex officials Philip Potter Giancarlo de Vincenze as responsible for setting up Tether Holding Limited in the British Isles. So it's, they're owned by the same people, and then just throw Reeve Collins and Brock Pearson in, in with them. Spoke, spokesman for Bitfinex and Tether said that the CEO of both firms is Juan Ludacrivius, Vanderveld. Sounds like a made up name to me. They've they've thrown some of these guys out once in a while. They look like actors. I, you know, who is the guts of the crypto cabal? I don't know. I don't know, but they, they own a lot of the cryptos. They got into it very, very early with Dan Larimer and Steam It and all that. With they were stealing money there. It's just bad. It's shit. That's why I'm like, silver will happen first. Silver is gonna Silver's making up for 170 years of price suppression. Cryptos are new. I don't know how long it's going to take to to wash this shit out of the cryptos. There's some good ones. A lot of a lot of these cryptos will just go away. Anything DeFi related will be gone. Like as in gone. Nexo, I think, is the next to fall. Uh, then Gemini and Genesis and Coinbase and all that shit has got to go before we can have an, a freely traded market in cryptocurrencies and then we got to get derivatives out of the way we got to remove derivatives i mean it truthfully i think the only way to go forward with the same system is to implement veritasium and i i, I it keeps coming back to veritasium peer-to-peer -peer transactions where you don't need regulators you don't need exchanges peer-to-peer -peer transactions but we'll see i don't know uh let's see January 2017 to September 2018, the amount of Tether's outstanding grew from 10 million to 2.8 billion, and then it just ballooned to 100 billion. Wouldn't you create money out of thin air by just creating a Tether token, pretending that FTX paid for it, soak up all the value out of FTX, and then run away? Absolutely. Well, you wouldn't because you have a conscience, and you don't want to end up in jail. Uh... Alleged price manipulation. Research by Griffin and Shannon found that Bitcoin prices increased after Tether minted new USD during market turndowns. They speculated this was an attempt at market manipulation. Duh. Duh. <laughs> Especially in 2021 when uh, Tether gave massive amount of tokens to FTX. And what were they doing? They're buying up all the Bitcoin and then you, you redeem your Tether and you got all the Bitcoin. And your crappy tether. And there was no money paid by FTX for that tether. It's crazy. Crazy shit. Crazy shit. Anyway, a um, lot of people talking about going to this new system, gold, silver backed. I absolutely think it's going to happen. I put it at the, the front of the, uh, the Road to Ruta website that my analysis of all the hidden meanings in the new $100 bill. And there's a ton. I did this, what, 10 years ago? When did it come out? 2009. So 13 years ago, I did an analysis of this. Go check it out. Because there's, I mean, there's things in here you would not believe is on the front of the $100 bill. Like, hey, hey, people of America, it's time to overthrow your government. That's written right there in gold on the $100 bill. Let me show you where. 
So that's the right side of the $100 bill. You got the gold. I, I do a full analysis of the meanings of the $100 bill. But look at this right here. Right here above the 100, it's it's the part of the Declaration of Independence that says that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, I can't imagine a different, a more destructive government than we have right now. It is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and institute new government laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Right there, right there, right up on the $100 bill written in gold, you have the right and the ability to overthrow your goddamn government for the, to assure your safety and happiness. It's your responsibility to stand up and say, get the fuck out of my country. That's where we are. That's what's going to happen over the next few months. So what do you need? You need physical silver in your own possession. Go to your local coin store, number one. If you don't have a local, send an email to Andy Sheckman. Info at milesfranklin.com. Say, Bick said, buy whatever you got in inventory. Now's the time. All right? And then you sit on the sidelines and wait. Now, for the future, after all the shit filters out, it might be a couple months, it might be a couple years before the crypto shit filters out. I would guess a couple of months when this craziness starts that all those bad guys will be rounded up and, and thrown in jail. So you're going to need cryptos in your possession because you're not going to be able to go get them. You're not going to know the price of them because none of these exchanges will be open. People will be telling you the price. BitBoy will come out and say, hey, Bitcoin's worth a million dollars, although there's no exchanges open. Nobody knows exactly how much it's worth, but I heard a guy who bought the house with one Bitcoin. A million dollar mansion with one Bitcoin. You're going to hear that kind of stuff. But you don't know. So get get a, no DeFi coins. If anything pays interest and you're involved with it, you're going to lose big time. Get your cryptos in your own possession only. Everything's gone. Silver in your own possession. Gold. The government's going to give away gold. You don't have to invest in gold. They're going to give it away as the new money. There's going to be so much gold flowing around, it's going to be ridiculous because there's not 100,000 tons of gold like Jeffrey Christian will tell you. There's millions of tons of gold. That's the big secret, that gold isn't as scarce as people think it is. That's why these bills, the $100 bill, is drenched with gold. Even the back. Where did, I, did I put a picture of the back? I didn't put a picture of the back. But the back has a gigantic 100... Uh, 100... Uh, it says 100, all in gold. It's like the right side of this bill should flop over, truthfully. With all the gold on the right side of this bill, it just should flop over. As you hand someone your bill, it should go bump. Go check it out at RoadToRoot.com. Very first article. <laughs> An amazing thing. I wrote this 14 years ago. No, wait. 13 years ago. This is happening. It just takes longer than you think. So get ready for the 13th is when Cliff, around the 13th, 13th, I'd say from the 10th to the 15th to the 16th to the 17th, keep your eye open for something massive. It could be the exposure of the, the pedophile rings. It could be anything. I don't know what it is. We'll find out soon enough, though. Um, you want to join the private road at Road to Ruta? You're going to get all kinds of behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, my buddy Will Lair and I did a great, had a great discussion. All the Jenny Moonstone interviews are there, the Freedom Road shows, the Road to Ruta Uncensored. People love this. This is the stuff I can't put on YouTube. Um, the Connections. I got my Cliff High interview there and Gary Gensler analysis and the U.S. Mint stuff. The U.S. Mint is completely against the American people right now. I mean, it is shocking. The U.S. Mint lost $111 million on their hedge book when the price of silver went down last year. If the price of silver goes down and you have a hedge short on silver, you should make that money up. That's why to hedge in the first place. But they lost $111 million because they were involved in the Rust and Benham, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Lease Silver Con. Go check it out. This is Big Swear. I'll talk to you later. <laughs>